Okay, so here we are looking at the schematic again. And uh, let's see if I can get this squared up just a little bit better. Now I want to try to identify the AM and the FM circuits, first of all, so I don't waste my time looking at AM stuff. There's the 12BE6, that's AM. Look, it says AM right there. That's an AM coil. Oh, there's a there's the selector switch. Switching from AM to FM. Um, AM coil, FM coil. FM, 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 FM. So the FM signal is going right along here, right along here, just going right through this way, here, 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 and then into the detector. And what's going on down here? FM oscillator, FM AFC. So this is all FM stuff here. It's quite a few, quite a few, quite quite a bit of stuff going on. Um, So if we start with a switch, let's take a look at the switch here. Um, what is being switched? I suspect it's B plus. Okay, so it's very hard for me to look at the screen and point properly. <laughs> Just not that coordinated. So here's B plus, connects to this line, this line comes over, up, and there's the switch in the FM position right now. So let's, now. let's just look at these other lines. What's this? This looks like the audio. Yeah. So so this top switch is the audio. This is the B plus being switched. Look at that. You can even tell it switches off. The B plus from the 12 BE6, so it really does switch from AM to FM in, in a real, very real sense. The switch down here. What is that? Yeah, that's the AM detector. Well, I don't exactly know. Well, yeah, that's the AM coming out. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of flu floating around here, especially in my house, and I don't have it, but I think I'm starting to cough a bit. So don't worry though, you can't get it over a video, I'm pretty sure of that. So that's going to be the output of the AM converter. Why, is there no AM IF amplifier in here? Come on. What? Shouldn't there be another tube? <laughs> another tube right about here? Okay, so maybe I'm missing something. Oh, it looks like it's shoved up here. No, it just says FM. That says AM. It's got to be coming around. So it must be using this tube for AM and FM, and the uh, they just didn't really reflect it on the schematic here. It doesn't really matter anyway, I don't think. The main thing is this high voltage. I'll go continue on my theory that it's a problem on this high voltage line. So let's see, high voltage gets to this tube, boom, directly. Boom, directly. Well, directly, I mean, what I mean by that is it's not going through a resistor. I'm suspecting it's a resistor that's causing this problem. Right through the coil, right to the top. What else? Oh, looky, looky. What does that say? Does that say 10 mega ohms there? What does that say? 10K. Well, that's interesting now. There's a 10K resistor right there. What's it got in brackets? 2.2K. What does that mean? Why, why, why? That's a couple places now I've seen where the resistance is written beside the resistor, and then again in brackets a different value. Well, that's a real suspect to me. 
the rest of it's a coil right in and the wire right in. Wow, looks like there's one resistor. And what would that do? That would slow the very... F no, this is the oscillator. This is, I'm, I'd convince myself it can't be the oscillator because it doesn't sound like the radio is drifting in. It just sounds like it's tuned stably and getting louder. And I would think if the oscillator B plus was you know, slow to rise, that the oscillations in this thing would be off. It would, it would start at some incorrect value and drift in. And that wouldn't make the radio quiet, really, unless it's way out. Uh, it would make the radio seem to be tuning itself. Well, I have no other suspects. What about a cathode resistor? Well, a cathode resistor could do the same thing. So there's one there. There's one there. Cathode resistors take a beating sometimes, especially in the output tubes. These ones, they these tubes don't conduct very much current, so the, generally the cathode resistors don't get beat up too much. So that resistor, that resistor, that resistor, that one. I think they all qualify as potential suspects. Now, my, my theory was the B-plus wasn't making it to the tube. Now I'm changing the theory to a more thermal type thing where this resistor conducts a little bit of current, heats up, and then it's value changes dramatically. This one, or this one, or this one. Wow, that's a lot of hunting and pecking inside the bottom of that radio. I think I'll make this 10K one the first one I'll go after. You should find it off the, this plate. Oh my god, there's no pin numbers here. <sighs> ah. Well, it's 10K. Maybe it's a question of spotting a 10K resistor near that first two. Is that the first two? They probably... This is one tube. And this is another tube. That doesn't... <coughs> excuse me. This is a half, a half, but it doesn't say which half. Which half goes with which half. But I'm going to assume that, that they would combine the uh, these two together. I suppose it's not necessarily so, but I think from an efficient wiring point of view, that's what they would do. So, uh, so I should be able to identify this. No, there's no tube layout diagram. Okay, I think that's about all we're going to get here from the uh, schematic. So... Why do I feel like I'm starting into a long journey again? Why do I have that feeling? Oh my god, well those two tubes are in this... Did I put that cover back on? I'm sure I did. Yeah, they're under that, under that cover, under this cover. Down here, under this cover. I will find a 10K resistor. That 10K resistor could be Quite a distance, actually. Uh, could be could be far away physically in the radio. Yeah, just to make things even more interesting. Now, didn't I get a big splash off this last time I was trying to pull this cover off? I shorted something briefly, and I got quite a quite a pop. Let's play it a little safe here. I'm not worried about getting hurt. I'm just, I just don't like being scared. <laughs> I don't like the, uh, I don't need the adrenaline. Let's put it that way. Okay, so we should be able to see any voltage in the power capacitor here. 
what's that? That's on the 150 volt scale. That's like 10 volts. That's nothing. That would be nothing. You know, another way of testing this, of course, would be to hook up some meters to some key locations and run it. We'll do that next. If I don't get anywhere with my 10K resistor hunt, or my general resistor hunt, then we can try. Well, if I can't find the resistor, I won't be able to figure out where to connect the meter. Come on out of there. Okay, let's put it back on the close up here. It's a great advantage to me <coughs> to use these can use the uh, close up camera too. Well, what's going on with that resistor right there? Center screen. Hey look, there's a 1K right there. No 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 was it wasn't was it 1K? Mr. Short-Term Memory. Ten K, quite clearly. Ten K, ten K, not one K. Ten K. Uh oh. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? You're uh, an hour early for feeding. We feed our cats uh, late in the evening, so their tummies are full when we go to bed. Oh my gosh, is that the light shoved in there? <laughs> oh man! Uh, <laughs> I kind of shoved the light right into this FM area. That's not the best deal, is it? I think I can strap it over here a little bit. It's not the best deal because of influences in the circuit. Well, that can't be the influence in this problem. That can't be it. But uh, not the best thing to... Well, there's a, a little teeny resistor there. It's a really suspicious one. I cannot read the value. What has happened to it? What has it, got? it looks like it got a white dot painted on it. Come on, show me a value. Okay, well, where's it going? Let's see, it's going, uh... That's one of the tube sockets, so it's connected directly to a tube socket. Directly to a tube socket. That's the plate. Coil and capacitor off of that point also. There's the capacitor. There's the coil. That's that's got to be the 10K with that funny looking stuff on it. Okay, let's get the let's get the ohmmeter on that. Wow, could it could, could this be that easy? This can't be that easy. Nothing's that easy. Now, once again, I apologize for being a little behind in reading comments and uh, replying to them. I'm trying to catch up. I was just a little little too busy. scale. Well, let's take another look at the uh, circuit diagram for a minute and just see how uh, practical this measurement actually is. If I measure right across it, capacitor one way, so that doesn't matter, coil, coil to a plate and capacitor, so I can measure this exact resistance on there. with it in circuit. That's what I want to say. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, let's just do this. I've been fooled too many times by voltages left in radios when I'm doing resistance readings. Let's just... There's nothing on that. So this is going to count. Here we go. 10K. 1K. Uh, <laughs> now normally 
resistors increase in value, they don't often go down. That's like exactly 1K. I think I know what the paint is now, too. Put a little white spot. 1K. Uh, it's nothing like having your, your excitement drained away from you by truth and evidence. So the white dot on the end is a shot of white paint that accidentally got on there when white paint was put on this screw here. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but the screw was locked down with white paint and it looks like whoever came in with the paintbrush went before he got to there. Okay, so that's not a 10K. What about that other one? There's another one connected to a pin. That one goes to ground. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? The resistor I'm after doesn't go to ground. It goes to the B plus line. Like I said, this 10K could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be here at all. Okay, what about this tube? What about this tube? So there's the 1K. Yeah. Well, let's just read the other two resistors. I see that little tiny guy there. And this big one that says one, a physically larger one that says 1K on it. I've replaced the, uh, the one we've measured already on the basis that it's supposed to be 10K and it's turned out to be 1K, but that really doesn't explain anything to me about why the radio takes forever to warm up. I'd replace it only after examining its location in the circuitry and determining that yes, indeed it is the 10K, which I'm kind of doing right now while I'm talking. Okay, back to making some measurements here. If it was low, how could that, how could that cause the problem? I don't know. Okay. Here we go. This one goes to ground. I don't think it could possibly be the one we're interested in. Twenty one or twenty two K. Twenty two K going to ground. 22K going to ground. There's a 22K going to ground off the grid. You know, some problem with the grid bias could also cause these kinds of headaches, for sure. some kind of leaky capacitor. We'll I have to think about that for a long time. Okay, and then the other resistor. Wow, I don't know which one. Look at the, look at the whole whack of them there. You know, for all I know, I'm looking at this, at this part of the circuit too. I could be looking at this. 1K cathode resistor there. I am looking at this. It's all jammed into the, it means the same two tubes in the same, uh, same box. Okay, so that's, the <coughs> where's he going? Where's the other leg of that one going? Look at how short they made it. Oh no, 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 no. Is it in that, it's in that plastic tube? 
plastic tube is just covering some braid. Where does the resistor lead go at the bottom there? I, I gotta get, I gotta get a, I gotta get a lead onto it. Full meter lead. It must just be going through this whack of solder here. And they've maintained it really, really short connection on it. So the resistor I'm after doesn't go to ground. This one also has the number on it, 1K. So you know what that looks like? That looks like a bypassed cathode resistor. Get the soldering in here. Hey, maybe it's another loose tube pin. Somebody, somebody built this by hand. I'm gonna guess it's probably a woman. I'm not suggesting anything by saying that. Just know that's the kind of way they ran the factories. That women would do this uh, very fine work. Men are a lot better with shovels, you know. Okay, let's read that. I don't think we're going to be any any surprises here. <clears throat> it's supposed to be one K, so we're on there. One K. So the 10K is somewhere else. Well, let's just go looking for 10K resistors. Far be it for me to sort through all this wiring. I'm not sure what that says. It's connected directly to another tube, so that's definitely not the guy. Oh my god, I, you know what? Um, I don't think it can be that far away. Well, let's just look. Let's look. be the make, and then the uh, value is not readable again. The one I don't need to read the value is hooked up to the wrong tube. So it's hooked up to one of the IF coils or something. This one is 100 ohms. Way down on the far end of the radio, 100 ohm. Oh, you know what this is? This is the uh, the FM detector. Look, you can almost see the pattern in it. That's a very important capacitor, that one right there. Ooh, those are diodes, aren't they? What are those? Those black guys. Capacitors? Diodes? I don't know another little resistor there, but this is down in the detector circuitry, so it can't be there. If anything, it would be back in the power supply, down at this end. Okay, so... So, so, so... I doubt any of these big ones are anything to do with it. You know what, we're right back to this resistor here. Which looks ever so slightly discolored. Well, we're going to have to identify it in some other way. So here, it's hooked up to this red wire. This red wire. <coughs> Getting that cough. Red wire. Man, this is a lot better doing this with a camera than trying to do it with eyeballs. It goes up into one of the IFs. It doesn't go anywhere else.
up to see it completely. Okay, back on the circuit diagram here. Okay. Let's see, does it make it straight to an IF? Yes, it does. See uh, where it says FMA and the coil. You follow the wire down and over, and there it is, hitting the top of the 10K resistor. And that's a connection to the other. So this runs between, in a sense. The resistor here and the connection. Never mind. So that would make some sense because because here's the one tube. Here's the other tube. There's the red wire, the IF. I still haven't actually read the value on this, so maybe it's maybe there's something about it going low. Oh, maybe we can see it. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, uh, yep, time to switch on the uh, soldering iron. Oh, time. Are you saying it's time for something else, Spunky? Or you want to use the soldering iron? Spunky, you're in luck. I have to kill a couple minutes here. Where'd you go? Come here. So, cat on the loose. <laughs> yeah. Spunky is 15 years old. He's a senior cat. I call him the wise cat. Like I think I told you before, if you've watched the video where I'm petting him, uh, or I just say, I know he's wise because he doesn't run outside and then realize it's too cold. He just stands and looks out the door he knows when it's too cold to go out. My other cats, the young ones, they just go blazing outside and then they freeze in the driveway and stand there going, what have I done? <laughs> What's up there, Spunky? Hmm? You're losing some fur. He just loves to have his chin rubbed, and his ears done, head, forehead, and all that stuff. Just put my soldering iron on high. Get it going a little quicker. Wow. Spunky provides. Spunky, what's going on here? What? What's this? <laughs> careful. Oh, careful. Not everything's steady here. Steady as she goes. What are you doing? Okay, time to go. Time to go. Go on. There, clear jumping room. Jump. Jump for it. Jump for it. Take a leap. No, 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 no. <laughs> You'll take some stuff with you. Hold on, you're gonna. You're, you're getting caught. Come on. <laughs> Bail out, cat. That was your chance. You did it. I don't think he'll go far. Well, thanks for the interlude. I'm going to lift one end of the uh, resistor. I'm afraid I'm a soldering iron abuser. The way I abuse them is I leave them on too long, too hot. Spunky, come back. We're not hot yet.
taken a little bit of time to. Oh, he did come back. <laughs> very dangerous what I'm doing right now. I'm pushing, I'm not at the moment, but I was pushing the soldering iron into the solder. The solder will melt, the soldering iron will slide off it and chink. I'll have a hot finger. Wow. Uh, sorry about making you watch this, but I'm sure we're just seconds away from getting going here. get a much better soldering iron. I think until I feed Spunky, he's not going to completely leave. <coughs> Always on. Jim, you need to know more about soldering irons. You agree, do you? Oh yeah, I got off my, there it goes. I got off my chair, guess who's in it? Pull it out of there. <coughs> yeah, I think maybe I'm starting to get sick. I don't feel sick. I can definitely feel something going on in my lungs though. Can we read it yet? Oh, look at that. It's definitely discolored. Ah, oh, it says 1K. The rest of the circuit is moving like crazy up there. Trying to move the uh, pin that's next to it. The, uh, there's nothing soldered to it. I can't, I can't get at it. That doesn't seem right. Let's try this one. Now I've had these tubes out. Could it be a really lousy tube contact? No, because I wiggled the tubes and if it was, the thing would have come and gone. Where are you, you pesky 10K resistor? looking at all the solder joints just to see if there's a you know a significant number of them that are bad or look bad and, uh, a 
couple of them have a bit of a cold look to them. What's the value of that resistor? Um, I think we might have to try step number two, which is attach some voltmeters and watch for uh, slowly rising voltage. That's pretty crappy that I do that. <laughs> A couple of you have recommended that I just go through and uh, you know, re-solder all the connections, and I'm counter-inclined to do that uh, because of the chance of introducing a problem. And, you know, or two or three, if you went through and re-soldered all this stuff and you really introduced a couple of problems, um, good luck finding those after. Especially after you resolder it, uh, and it didn't work, you might not be suspicious that the soldering was the cause. Now, of course, I, when I'm looking at and what you're looking at are probably two different things. You might spot something that I might miss. Now, I'm assuming the problem is, uh, well, there were a couple other resistors, right? There were some cathode resistors that I thought. Could go way high when they're cold. Good luck finding those. Wow, see, it made, they built this kind of as small as they could, and really, probably one of the limiting factors. I mean, of course, the radios, they want it to look a certain way, so it's going to have a certain dimension. But uh, another limiting factor is just, can anybody build this? What is that white thing? I think that's a piece of spunky. Right there. White hair. Still don't see 10K popping up anywhere. I'm, I'm not seeing the writing on a lot of these resistors. That's not too good. What happened to that capacitor? Yikes. There's lots of uh, solder jobs that look like they have the potential to be cold. Okay, I really gotta hunt down this uh, this 10k. I can't let that go. I have to nail that down tight. Oh yeah, don't sit down. I'll sit on a cat. <laughs> Spunky, who's this on the screen here? Hey, who's this? Who's that? Is that you? Is that you up there? I don't care. What's that got to do with food? Give me the food. Okay, I'm gonna stop for now, feed the cats, and uh, even though it's a little early, and uh, come back to this in a little bit.